When was the last time you went to church? I've never gone to church as a, as a worshipper. You've, you've never gone to church just for you? Not even like with, a, with school or...? Yeah, with school. Yeah. But me, myself, Stacey, I haven't thought I'm going to go Mid, to church. Midnight Mass at no. Christmas? No. When was the last time you prayed? I don't really think I've ever genuinely prayed. Hmm. <laughs> Although I've never been religious, in these unsettling times. I don't know what time it is, I don't know what day it is. I've been reevaluating my priorities and asking myself if I've got them quite right. A lot of us are starting to think, right, what do we really want? Like, what's it all about? You know, massive questions. When it comes to looking at some of these questions, I've sometimes wondered if religion has something to offer and whether I'm missing out. So I'm packing my bags and taking a leap into faith by spending 10 days in a convent. These sisters invite you to take up the challenge and join them. I need to be smart on a Sunday. Could an intense dose of peace and spiritual reflection help me find a more fulfilling life? Fun. See you later. Have a good See ya. Show. I text you. Alright. Miss you. I miss you, baby. It's stunning. It's stunningly beautiful, isn't it? I'll be living alongside a small community of Anglican nuns. The convent used to be a teaching order, and I've been told I'll be following their strict daily timetable of work, reading, and prayer. It's an entirely different life. I love my freedom. My life is probably their idea of total hell. Oh my God, here we are. This is us. Yeah, it's the Priory. The 23 women who live here practice teachings that have been preserved for over 15 centuries. But now they are part of a dwindling population of only 220 Anglican nuns that remain in the UK. Hello. Hello. How are you? Nice to see you? Oh, it's so nice to see you. Are you all right? Yes. yes. Hello. Jocelyn. Jocelyn, lovely Hi. to meet you. I'm Helen, nice lovely to meet you. Likewise, thank oh, you so, so much for having me over. You're welcome. I think Jocelyn's got the timetable. That's our life. The first thing really on the timetable is chapel at six. And before that, Helen's going to show you where your room is. How long have you been living here? Uh, 25 years, well, actually, no, it's sort of 28 and a half years. In this priory? With the community. I actually came in 1993. No way. But you've been a sister since 1993. That's a long old time, isn't it? It's a lot of time. It's a lot of time. So this is like our guest house. So come oh, in. Great. Yeah, don't worry. It's not very heavy. It's just an awkward shape. There we go. Well, do you want to handle that? Nah, I'm all right. Thank you, though. I'm used to this. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I hope you'll be comfortable. It's kind oh, of basic, wow. but... No, this is perfect. Is it? Thank you. This I wasn't expecting my own room, actually. I don't know what Were I was you? expecting. Right, so next... where do you need me? Chapel. And about six o'clock. This is chapel, so we tend to keep quiet around here. OK. So, so I think we'll put you next to Sister Grace. So okay. can you just sit there? Every sister here has taken the three key vows of poverty, obedience and celibacy. And they also pray in chapel four times a day. This prayer shall ever be in my mouth. And before the altar of mercies. Oh yeah, thank you. I, I will glory the, in the Lord. Proclaim with me the greatness of the Lord. 
Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he answered me. Glory to the Father and to the Son. Thanks, Paige. Oh, yeah. I know that prayer is meant to help settle the mind, but for me, that's going to take some practice. Thank you. Thank you so much for your help. Sorry, I would think I understand. The star means pause. It's the first time I know. you'll do far better than that. Yes, that'll be fine. I didn't realise I needed to pause. We got through together. I oh, know, thank you. Yes. Thank you, Grace. I can't claim to understand all of the scripture. <laughs> but I get the general sort of gist of it. Yeah. I'll just warn you, tomorrow morning from the chapel, we go straight to breakfast. Uh -huh. And it's, it's silent, it'll be a silent meal. You're probably not used to eating in silence. Fine, OK. But so Anita's got some reading material for you. OK, this is about St Benedict. Great. And that was the foundation rule of Western monasticism. It's my homework. Yes. I haven't had homework in a long it's, time. It's... I bought my fancy pyjamas just in case I was sharing a room with the sisters, but <laughs> not necessary. Right, so this is my timetable for tomorrow. Can I just say I really aspire to this level of organisation. Help clear breakfast. You get free time at 7.45. Singing practice on Friday. God, they've got their work cut out. <laughs> this is the, the magazine that I brought, and this is the literature that the sisters have given me to have a look at. Kev's just texted me, are there any rules? Of course there are rules. Silent breakfast. I don't know why I'm finding this so funny. A silent breakfast. Kev can't believe it. I don't know why, because I've been to loads of different places. He thinks that I am going to come out of this the same woman I entered. Which may be true. <laughs> it's dawn on my first full day, following the strict life of the nuns. Ideally, I'd be in bed, but today in my new world, it's a time for quiet contemplation. Try and find a breakfast. Stacy, come with me. I've been assigned to help out with the morning chores. Where speaking is restricted to the bare essentials. So if you do the tables, yeah. and I'll do the floor around you. So how are you finding being kind of quiet? It feels really strange to me. Yeah. Because I suppose when I'm around the table yeah. at home, I was thinking the last time I hit in silence was when I'd had an argument and I was sulking. Yeah, I know, and it's like the silence becomes like a weapon. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you dare talk to me. <laughs> but um, what is the thought process behind it? It's the idea where by keeping quiet, you're alone with your own kind of thoughts and prayers, and yet you're eating together. I'm not surrounded by a load of chit-chat. Yeah. 
Sister Helen was an archivist and a musician before choosing this choir to life. Yeah, I've spent umpteen years in community, sweeping down tables, wiping tables, sweeping floors. I was asked 27 when I came. So how old are you now? Uh, 56. Are you? You look yeah. great. I was like brown hair. <laughs> I came here, now look at it, it's going white. You can dye it if you want to. No, they no. wouldn't realise. I said, Helen, why is your hair change colour? It's all right. <laughs> 25 years is a long time to stick in one place. And Sister Grace has been here twice as long. There we are. Now we have to roll it along. Oh, yeah. So... She's asked me to prepare the chapel for the ritual of communion. Now let go. Oh, look at that. That's it. I wish I had my phone to show you because my house at home looks exactly like this. I've got bare walls, I've got a table that I put a tablecloth over and two candles. Well, I never. I've dressed my house like a monastery. Oh, that's incredible. Without realising. Now we're going to get the other things ready. OK. Taking Holy Communion is symbolic of the Last Supper and a celebration of the sacrifice that Jesus made. The wafer goes on top of there. That's for the priest. That's right, the bread, yeah? Yes, the bread. Oh, look at these. Yeah, these are what we call the people's wafers. Now, it's oh, heavy and it's awkward, so you need to go steadily. Just put it about there. And you'd have been how old when you were... I was 25. 25? 25, when I made this life-changing decision. Was it the right decision? I have wavered. I've had doubts. When I was about 50, I thought, have I done the right thing? Shouldn't I be married with my own children? And I've always come through that. And when you start that life, Grace, I can't imagine what a shock to the system it must be. What were the difficulties initially? I think my greatest difficulties was the pain I gave to my parents. My parents were absolutely against it, against and when I did come, there was no way that they were going to come and visit me in Whitby. That um, must have been hard, Grace, when your folks weren't on board and you... It was hard. I've still got the letter that my mother wrote to me when I was leaving home. And it said, we shall miss you, especially at tea time. But just know, we'll always be ready to have you back home at any time. This is my body given for you all. Jesus then gave thanks for the wine. He took the cup, gave it and said, this is my blood shed for you all. Although I can see that following this calling comes at great personal cost that I couldn't imagine making myself, there are still some willing to undergo that sacrifice. Oh, she's interesting, of course. Yes. Nadine, a climate scientist, is one of a diminishing number of women still contemplating this way of life. In my experience, a lot of women coming to community now are um, older, have had experience in the yes. world, so um, have worked in the world, are modern independent women and are coming in the 40s and 50s even. And what you've just described, that was you, right? You were um, an intellect, you had a brilliant job, you had a very sort of normal day-to-day -day existence. In the lockdown, it gave people a, a real chance to yes. reflect and it occurred to me that um, life is very short and I want to have the opportunity to do something radical, to live radically and to seek God. Wow. 
So course. you made this decision in lockdown? Yes, mm. that this can be a real option and possibility. How do you feel in chapel? I'm dying to ask how your experience is. <laughs> yes. um, is it a bit weird? Or? Uh, yeah, it's probably a bit weird, but not a bad weird. I'm finding the prayers a bit repetitive. I mean, it is repetitive, and the Psalms, sometimes they can, just let's be honest, seem boring. You know, you think, another 20 verses to go to the Psalms. Sometimes you just zone out, and then sometimes one word will just pop out to oh, you yes. and be yes. important, and yes. it will be telling you something. Frequently yes. that happens. Sister Anita doesn't like the hymns. <laughs> <laughs> you not about the hymns. Some of the hymns aren't very good, in my opinion. There's no rhyme or rhythm. Or... <laughs> Some of them are excellent and give you something to think about. Are you more likely to hear him or have a connection with him when things are calm and there's quiet? Calm and quiet, and a lot of ideas pop into your head, don't they? Not always holy ones. But... but but the, the regularity of the life, of the daily pattern of life, I think. Well, it's an essential part, isn't it, of what we do. Living here, the structure, the routine, the repetitive nature of things, that's an integral part of being a nun, right? Mm -hmm. We're seeking God in the mundane, in the mundane activities of life, so doing the dishes, um, the rhythm and the cycle of the day, keeping everything very simple. It's a very simple lifestyle. Um, so I think the idea is this helps us to encounter God. It helps support us in that process of encountering God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The idea that, you know, you can take real pleasure and meaning from, like, mundane, chores is quite a revelation to me. I can't stand here and say, you know, putting the dishwasher on, it means I can have a moment when I'm closer to God because I just feel mm. like, oh, it's such a laborious task. But I, I think I understand what they're saying, you know, take, take meaning from every, everything you do and don't always place importance on like big, loud, massive achievements. It can be just simply existing and be being here. I'm up before the sun. Again. No. I mean, clearly, <clears throat> I would struggle getting up every morning to go and pray. And I'd struggle to pray four times a day, I really would. But what you've got to bear in mind is for these ladies, for these nuns, the kind of desire to be with God is greater than a lion. It's not just the early mornings that are pushing me out of my comfort zone. Praise him, heaven of heavens. It's saying words that have no meaning to me that I'm finding difficult. Come in. Hello. Oh, you've got yourself Hi. a coffee. A cup of tea. Are yes. you all right? Yes, thank you. <laughs> so I'm right in thinking most of you in this room have been praying four times a day for decades. Yes. 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 And when you're praying, and you'll have to forgive my ignorance, yeah. Are you praying in the hope that God's listening? We pray in the faith that God is listening. Right. Rather than the hope that he is. OK. Because we believe that God does listen. Yes. And it's uh, like having a conversation, time. but yes. it's hard to hear the other side of the conversation yes. because you've got to sort of tune into a different yes. wavelength. Mm. It's sort of being connected to a different reality, really. OK. Sometimes comes yeah, it comes into your mind and you know that you've been heard and that you've been listened to and it makes you feel amazing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It really does. Sometimes he says things that you, you don't, don't want, want to hear. <laughs> <laughs> Are there moments where you feel obligated to pray for the whole world? 
Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Does that feel heavy? It can do. Yeah. If you let it feel heavy. Especially at the moment when you get absolutely inundated with news headlines. Yeah. 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 And there are things that are going on which you're thinking, I don't see a solution to this. Mm. And yet, we've got to find a solution if we're going to survive. Mm. It's so interesting because it sounds like the headlines push you sisters to lean into your faith yeah. mm -hmm. and the same headlines make me think how can there be a higher being yeah. 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 this is a private question so only answer if you feel comfy but what have you prayed for today i prayed for you to have a lovely time here <laughs> no <laughs> did you yes <laughs> nadine that is really selfless you used your prayer to ask if I could have a lovely time? Yes. yes. Thank you ever so much. <laughs> I feel a bit um, <laughs> selfish. No. I didn't pray for anyone this morning. As an active community, the nun's compassion reaches beyond the walls of the convent. Today, I'm joining them at a charity distribution centre in Middlesbrough. Right, where are we here? Yeah. One of the rapidly growing number of food and clothing banks in the country. So, tell me what you need me to do. One of these, and then what, one of those packets of biscuits. Yep. That goes down there, packet of these. Yep. And then two packets of those crisps. Fine. You ask them how many children they've got. Uh -huh. The next person that comes and asks for a bag is number 50. Is that how many people have been this morning? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So how long have you been doing outreach work? It's, it's what we do. It's what we've, what we've always done, different work in different places. Mm -hmm. We think this is a really important project and we need to be seen. We need to know that, you know, we're in the real world. We're not just living in some very fad place in the convent. We actually do live in the real world as well. Um, Thank you very much. Oh, my God, total pleasure. Do you need one? Yeah. I don't want the bag to break. Maybe hold it at the bottom. Thank you. I should have double bagged it, really. <laughs> hold it like that so it don't break. Thank you very much. Pleasure. Do you want me to come I'm in see this? OK. Sister Karen is an outreach nun. Thank she you. helps out here with Debbie, one of the regular volunteers. My favourite. That's lovely. I love it a bit. The reason why I'm here is because two years ago I lost my daughter. Three years ago I lost my mum and dad. Excuse me. But I come here and I feel free. Sometimes I go home and I feel lost. But in here I'm never lost. Is that photo? There. Can I have a look? Oh, wow. Oh, isn't she beautiful, Debbie? What's her name? Nikki. Nikki. She was the life and soul of the party, my firstborn. <laughs> How old was she when she died? 38. Wow. Yeah, 38. Can I ask you something, Debbie? When you lost your girl, did you have questions? Did you think, how, how can there be this higher being? How can there be a god? when I've lost my daughter. Yeah, I really did. Because I used to say, well, if you're up there, why take her? She's got four children. Mm -hmm. Like, I would have swapped places. But last night I went home. My daughter felt like, does this sound mad? Like, I felt like I was my daughter. And then it went and I thought, she doesn't look nothing like me. <laughs> but. I got that sense that she was sat in my body. You felt her presence? Really. Wow. And their presence in here today is calm. Mm. I could have them round every day. Yeah. Really. Because not every day is as calm. It's turbulent. Yeah, no, I hear ya. It takes the pain away. The project is run by Reverend Calf. She manages several initiatives like this one and helps lead two churches in her local parish. Um, so, Kath, you've always been religious. I wouldn't say I've always been religious. When I was 33, I was on a very low ebb in my life and um, I'd driven up to the top of a lane because I just felt I couldn't go on any longer. 
I mean, like many people who feel suicidal, I'm not sure whether or not I would have carried it out, but I really did feel that way. I was just smashing the, the, the car and just saying, God, you have to help me, I can't do this anymore. And um, from that moment on, I was sat in a pub and just felt this wave of joy and love come over me. It wasn't vodka? No, I, <laughs> but I just couldn't stop laughing and crying. And... See, I've never yeah. experienced anything like that. Yeah. I've just never felt mm -hmm. like I've been in the presence of God. Yeah. God wants you to ask him if he exists. So what, he can show me? He can show you. It may be in a, a different way to, to that which I experienced. You know, the beauty of a sunset, a sunrise, many different ways God speaks to us. The sisters, I just think they're so, mm -hmm. they're so thoroughly decent, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, they're just, really kind women and I just think I'm probably a bit too selfish and I'm you know I've got mm. things that I need to work on. God doesn't expect you to give up everything to find a relationship with him. Mm. You don't need to be coming on. He will show you in your own special way. It's an amazing space and see you later. <laughs> I'm a third of the way through my time living with a traditional, all-female religious community. One of the things I'm finding especially challenging is letting go of the trappings of modern life. I've been purposely leaving my phone at the sides of my bed. I don't want to look at the whole day. <laughs> then this evening, I'm going to have 200 emails, 100 messages, everyone tearing their hair out. Why aren't you answered? Up to six hours of a nun's day is taken up with manual work. This can involve anything from making meals to handcrafting cards for the community shop. I'll be following so, you because I'm useless at crafts. Nobody's useless. This is <laughs> your chair. <laughs> Thank you. Now, I thought we'd start with something easy. Yeah. Is this my glue stick? No. Oh, no. Your glue stick is here. Mm -hmm. Of the three vows these Anglican nuns will pledge, I'm curious to know how the vow of obedience is upheld. Put a blob on the flower. Oh, yeah. Are you obedient, oh, Sister okay. Helen? Am I obedient? Yeah, I think so. Sometimes it's through gritted teeth. But yeah. <laughs> Sometimes she's quite stubborn. But sometimes... She's stick in the mud. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there are things I do that Sisters like Grace would never do. <laughs> like what? Like, Helen will come in and say, oh, my feet are wet. She kicks off her sandals and she walks across the room barefoot. What? Not, not that often, Grace. No, it happened once it recently. It happened once recently. And nobody said anything yeah. because we knew it was Helen. Yeah. It's OK for Helen. Yeah, no, that's just we, not we, on, actually. <laughs> That's interesting, you're saying obedience is the hardest vow for you. For me, it's the vow that gives me the biggest challenge. Since I was, like, 18, mm -hmm. I've, yeah, just done things my yeah, way. Yeah. Mm. It's not one of my um, traits that I'm proud yeah. of, cos I am stubborn. Obedience isn't about not doing something. It's more about listening, mm. listening to what the other person is saying. Mm. You've certainly got a gift with colour yeah. and choosing, so that's lovely. I'm made up with that, thank yes. you. Yes. So what are your priorities? In life? Yes. I'd like to prioritise happiness, my home life. Mm -hmm. For the last 15 years, it's been work, 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 career, work, 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 and then your private life is on the back burner. And I'm nearly 35, so... Mm -hmm. You've got a family. I know. This is it, isn't it? Yeah. I start thinking about it, don't I? You've got to decide if children 
have a place in that. Whether you can sacrifice some of what you do yeah. to have a family. Did you ever want to be a mum? Yeah, I think I did. But this kind of took over, really. Um, I look back and do I regret it? Yes and no. I'm not sure it was ever really my calling. Anyway, it's too late now, so that ship sailed. <laughs> The conversations I'm having with the sisters are making me think about the value I place on career and earning money. Hiya. Hello. Do you want me to help you? Yeah, come on. I've got to go to the 68-year-old Linda gave up her job yeah. as an occupational therapist nearly 40 years ago. For me, as an outsider, you learn very quickly that there are so many sacrifices the one sacrifice is I just can't go and buy, out and buy a nice big book when I want to. I had about 150 books when I joined the community. I had two wardrobes full of clothes. You don't need possessions. Our rooms are quite small, but there are things that I hang on to, like special cards that people have given me. I have a CD player. And what's the thought process behind that? In the rule, it says we share everything we have and we are with each other. And it's the idea that we're not poor in the material sense, but it's the spirit of poverty that we don't hang on to things unnecessarily. We have a yearly allowance um, to spend as we wish. Do you mind me asking how much that is? £75. A year? Mm-hmm. 75 quid a year? Mm-hmm. Wow. And I use some of that to buy presents for Christmas. Any money you come with, um, when you make your life vows, you sign it over to the community. So, did you have money prior I had, to...? I had savings, and I had my money in a savings account. So you had to share it with all the sisters? It goes into the community fund. How did that feel? Fine. Didn't need it, did I? Everything we need is provided. Yeah. You know, if you need new glasses, you, you can really buy your glasses. I guess you have to be quite frugal because... We do have to be careful, yes. If I'm being totally honest, I like earning money. What is it you like about earning money? I like the freedom. Remember, I... I didn't have money for such a long time. I weren't born <laughs> into money, like, we were skint. In my first house, uh, we lived above a pet shop in a bedsit. Like, bills and maintenance, that can be such a concern, it can be such a worry if you're living in the real world. Yeah. All of these expenses, these ladies don't experience. And that must, that must feel great. rather practised at following my religious timetable. And I have to admit, I'm also starting to feel part of the community. While I haven't felt God's presence yet, the sisters have given me some spiritual reading, which I'm attempting to connect with. I have been quite studious. Well, I've been given all these books. Are you actually reading them? Yeah, I don't know why. <laughs> I'm so surprised. This book is really thought-provoking. Lots of non-believers feel like 
We've never been given concrete proof that this higher being exists. But what the author is saying is it's a feeling. You know, we can't just believe in things that we can see and touch. You know, we know that love exists because we feel it. You know, we know people can be merciful and kind. And I can get on board with that argument. Is this where you will end up? Yes. In the company of all the other sisters that have gone before me. So you've lost lots of sisters lots that you really loved? Sisters. Yes, yes. And some of them choose who they would like to be buried with. Sometimes it's not who they expect. Oh. <laughs> as the prioress, Sister Jocelyn acts as the next of kin, which includes looking after each nun throughout her life and beyond. There's more of them in heaven than there are on earth now. And I'm right in thinking that you go and sit with them so they don't die alone. Not just me, we all do. We take it in turns and, and sit with them. But it's very often that they will actually die. The actual moment of death will come when nobody is with them. Which may seem sad, but dying is something that nobody else can do for you. Yeah. It's something you have to do on your own. How, how do you feel about dying, death? It's just, I look on it now as the next step on the journey. A few years ago, I nearly did die. I should have died because I had a pulmonary embolism. On the law of averages, it ends up in death. So God obviously had more work for me to do. That showed me that there was nothing to fear. So you're not scared of dying? I'm not scared of dying, no. I am. I'm completely terrified. You're not alone in that. But doesn't the uncertainty frighten you? Because that's what frightens me, because I don't know what's going to happen, and I don't know if I'm going to see the people I love ever again. I think we will. Because I'm aware of people that I've loved. They're with me still. I can't see them, I can't touch them, but I can feel that they're there and I can feel their, their guidance and feel their presence. Do you know anybody that's died? I've lost quite a few people that I've known and loved. But you know, when you say, I know they're there, I don't know that they're here. And that makes me sad. When I say to you, Sister Jocelyn, sometimes I'm envious of people who truly believe. I wish I could feel that sense of comfort and I wish I could feel the presence of those that aren't on earth anymore. When I turned 30, I had a bit of a wobble because I suddenly wasn't, you know, a young, 20-something-year-old with all these decades ahead of me. Yeah, I want to live forever. I don't want it to end. Yeah. But I know it's going to sometime. The thing is to make the most of each day while we've got it. Life is hard, isn't it? You know, end of life is hard, terrifying, confusing. I think the difference here is there is no resistance. There's acceptance that that's what happens because death is not the end. And I think they're really lucky to, to have that. I think that's a really wonderful thing.
As someone that has never embraced the idea of a God, I've always assumed the Bible wouldn't contain any lessons relevant to me. My relationship with the Bible is pretty non-existent. I went to a Church of England school when I was little, so I'm like, familiar with some passages, but I've definitely not read the whole thing sort of front to back. This morning, I've been invited to attend the Sisters' weekly Bible class. Is it OK to sit here? I'm not sure if I'll find this a helpful way to connect with anything spiritual, but I'm staying open-minded. We are doing the Good Samaritan. So Luke chapter 10. A man was on his way from Jerusalem down to Jericho when he was set upon by robbers who went off leaving him half dead. The priest saw him and went past on the other side. So too a Levite saw him and went past on the other side. But a Samaritan saw him and showed him kindness and helped him. So I wonder how you relate to any of those characters. I, knowing myself, I'd probably be somewhere in the company of the priest and the Levite. How often do we pass by on the other side of the road when perhaps we just need to stop? If mm -hmm. somebody's kicking off at the train station or, you know, in distress, mm -hmm. I can't sit here and say I've stopped every single time. No. Which, you know, isn't, isn't very Christian of me. You know, I'm quite relieved to hear that three of us <laughs> passed by on the other side because it came to me and I felt so ashamed. It appears to me that this class is about dissecting paragraphs of your Bible and then trying to figure out how you can relate them to modern day conundrums. Yes. yes. It doesn't yes. have to be a big thing. It can do it in the little things as well, the everyday things. Be aware of somebody that needs a bit of help today. How does it make you all feel, as women, as sisters, when people behave in such an abhorrent way under the guise of this holy book? It makes us feel very guilty on behalf of the people that do that kind of thing. There's so many wars and acts of violence that are done in the name of Christianity. Mm -hmm. I think part of our response as a community is our prayer life and our praying for these situations in the faith that prayer can make a difference. How do you respond to the argument that some of the Bible feels really regressive and homophobic and, you know, misogyny is sort of playing out all the way through ethnic cleansing, you know, yeah. people say the Old Testament is barbaric. It's very human. Parts of it are, but that was the culture of the time. Is that problematic then, referencing literature from the Old Testament when it now feels so wildly outdated? How outdated is it? We like to think it is, but actually when you read the Old Testament, then you listen to the news, you're not so sure. I hope you don't mind me asking all these questions, yeah. but I just haven't figured it out yet or figured out what my relationship with whatever is out there is going to yes. look like and my relationship yes. with this book. I think keep asking the questions. Yeah. To be totally, totally honest, if I were to find that there was space in me to have a meaningful relationship with God, I don't think I'm going to come to that realisation through literature. I think I'm more likely to react to the idea of reflecting and being present and 
prayer, which actually I can't quite believe I'm saying that, but spending time with the sisters, they've said, Stacey, it's not that black and white. You can have thoughts that are actually mini prayers. And I can definitely relate to that more. Are you alright, Sister Grace? Yes. No, I'm not alright. What's wrong? I'm half left. <laughs> Despite my reservations about the Bible, the sisters have asked me to take on a key role in their communion service. Have you heard the big news, Sister Grace? I'm <laughs> thirsty. Stacy's going to read the epistle. Oh, that is lovely. Oh, I'm so pleased. Yay! I I'm going to practice it. Yes, yes. Because I don't want to mess it up. An epistle is a letter that contains important teachings for the congregation. So it's an honour to read one out. So I'll be reading so all So you'll this. be reading that. OK. And at the, you start, just read exactly as it says there. This section? Yes. Shall I go and have a so practice? So shall we have a practice of that oh. now? When we've said Amen, yep. then you stand up and bring the book to the lectern. OK. Ready? Yep. For this to end, Christ died and lived again, so that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. Then close the book and bring it back to your place. A bow is probably a bit much, isn't it? Yeah. I bet you'll be nervous. Yeah, I bet I will. Cos I'm not great at public speaking. No. I'm really not. Like, well, when the thing to do is just to take your time like you did then. Yeah. Take a deep breath and don't fiddle with your hair. Don't <laughs> fiddle with my hair. OK, no, that's, that's sound advice. Thank you for trusting me with it. I won't let you down. We did wonder when we were sort of talking about you coming, how long you would stick it. We thought you might sort of pack up and go after three or four days. <laughs> Three or four days, Sister Jocelyn, you had no faith in me. <laughs> what are you writing? Oh, I'm writing a prayer request, not for me. For my pal, who's religious and having a really good time. While I've been living alongside the sisters, I've been finding out what it takes to dedicate your life to your faith. Heavenly Father, today we pray especially for our sister Helen on the anniversary of her profession. And today I'm joining Sister Helen as she marks 25 years since she took her life vows. That's lovely. In here, these anniversaries hold more importance than birthdays. Thanks, Alina. Thank you. Are we ready for cards? Yes. Right. Cats. We've got several cats. Sweet. She's definitely in the midst of a vision. And another cat. I've never seen so much cat paraphernalia. Have you? <laughs> Sister Grace, do you mind telling me what a Sister Helen was like back in the day? <laughs> oh. Um, she can't remember. Yes. <laughs> she, she was... Absolutely lovely, oh. but like all of us, there were times when she struggled. Yeah. Big times. And she needed a listening ear. We had a lot of walks, didn't we, Grace? We I remember did. a lot of walking to the beach. We walked together and Helen poured out <laughs> all her problems and, oh, can I go on? And look at her now. At 56, 
Sister Helen is currently the youngest professed sister at the convent, which means she might end up being the last nun standing. I hate the idea of you being here alone. I love a cat. <laughs> she worry about that, being alone? I would be sad if I was alone, because I just think there is so much to give and so much this life has to offer the world. Yeah. What I find here is a reality and a pace of life which you can keep up for years and years and years. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? I do. It's definitely a marathon pace, not a sprint pace. I guess the way I choose to live, mm -hmm. I'm much more likely to burn out, aren't I? Yeah. Working silly hours every day, here, That's there, fun. everywhere. You know, you're working in showbiz. That's a notoriously fickle business. Yep. Who's to know how long yep. Stacey's going to have a career? Correct. How long before? Oh, Stacey's old hat now. Yep. Oh, what am I going to do then, Helen? Precisely. We live in a really kind of temporary world. Mm. We're quite unusual in the sense that I'm in, I've made a, a commitment for life. Mm. And that feels really countercultural now. Mm because everything is so sort of um, transient. Mm -hmm. and jobs are transient, relationships are transient. Mm -hmm. And I suppose you have got a lot more stability and certainty and security. Mm -hmm. You know where you are and you know where you're going to be in a year's time. And, well, you might do. You might, I might not be here in a year's time. I put this way, I don't intend to leave, but then I haven't got a glass ball. I don't know what, in 10 years' time, where I'll be. I cannot imagine it if you leave the... Life. <laughs> I don't see myself leaving, but what happens if someone walks into your life and you think, oh. What do you mean? You know, you know, you hear about sisters who leave religious life to get married because they've just met someone. They're Stop thinking, it. Yeah. Who's to know? Who's to know what, what the future holds? Helen. I mean, I'm not looking for anyone. I'm not in the market for anyone. <laughs> oh, my goodness, you might fall in love and leave the communal life. I'm surprised to hear that you haven't completely written off the idea of finding love. I don't think you ever can, can you? No. I mean, I wouldn't actively seek it. I'm not actively seeking it. No way. But you never know what's around the corner. Can you imagine being in a romantic relationship again? No, not at all. I think I'm too selfish now. I think I've been doing my own thing too long. I wouldn't say you're selfish. You're saying never say never. Life is crazy. Life is crazy and life is wild. My time at the convent is coming to an end and I'm just about to do my first ever reading in chapel. I have not been late for chapel yet. Not one day. Although this morning my hair is giving me real hassle. <laughs> so if it's going to be any morning, it's going to be today. Got a girl. the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. We do not live to ourselves, and we do not die to ourselves. If we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. For to this end Christ died and lived again, so that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. This is the word of the Lord. Stacy, yeah. You give life to the world. You do. You influence a lot of people for good. Well, I'm lucky because I get to meet people like you. <laughs> In 
here a few little things for you to remember your visit by. Some things to help you into the future. And it, Thank you. it helps you to look for the wonder of God in places you wouldn't expect yeah. to look. Sort of day to day. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I wasn't expecting this at all. <laughs> it yeah. might be too soon, in a way, to ask you what you're going to take away with you. You might not know until you get back into your ordinary life yeah. what you find you've got from here to help you with that, with the busyness and what have you. I've definitely taken on board so much of what you've said. I think I've been very honest about where I am with religion, yes. but I like the idea of being able to truly believe. Yeah. Because I see what it gives you. Mm -hmm. uh, who wouldn't want that? Well, that's a very good beginning, and just keep, keep open. Yeah, absolutely. I definitely feel like it's been enlightening, and I do feel like it's been life-affirming. I have had the opportunity to really sit with myself, recognise what I like about myself, recognise the less appealing traits, and I have learnt loads. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. I think what I have learnt is there is an absolute sense of purpose and they know what they want to dedicate their lives to and in turn I actually think they're very fulfilled and I think there's something to be said for trying to figure out what you want to prioritise and then just going for it. I'm not stupid enough to think that I know it all. If they're saying there's more to it, maybe, maybe there is. Never say never. Listen, thank you so much. I, I've had the loveliest time. See you later. Yeah. Bye. 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 Oh, happy day. When she does